So thank you. Um, so uh, hello everybody. Uh, I'm just going to talk about grant production in France and I will also talk about Europe because uh, it's quite complicated to separate France from Europe. Uh, okay, so um, uh, first I will explain you very briefly uh, what her, our history, um, uh, not the whole history of France, but uh, the, our history regarding grain production. Uh, uh, very quickly, I will explain you wha what is the place of French grain sector in the world. And uh, I will also try to show you where we grow grain crops in France and where do the grains go. Um, something it, maybe you often we we can talk about uh, think about Europe as a green production uh, area, but we have actually very intensive production of grain. So I also will explain you a little, little bit this aspect and all the environmental problems that we we have. And uh, at the end, I will uh, focus on the on the common agricultural policy. Uh, and the, the place of environment in this policy. And I will try to finish by uh, something on the quality label. It's also something uh, that maybe it's quite different from the US, our policy for quality label. Uh, so uh, <laughs> our story. The first, it's very brief. Um, <laughs> we, we are a, a wheat country, a wheat civilization. So um, the wheat uh, came from uh, actually uh, um, Tur Turkey, Turkey, you say? No, uh, Turkey, Syria, Syria, Syria. Yeah, you know the fertile crescent. So uh, the wheat that we use come from this region. It's not the 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 wheat from uh, Europe, but uh, the wheat that uh, the we use for our bread come from this region. So by many ways. And um, uh, um, the, the main way, the, 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 the spread of the, the grain in, in uh, France, it's more thanks to the Mediterranean world. So first the Phoenicians, the Egyptians uh, who discovered the Levant. And uh, in France, we, can have, we have kind of all very old uh, repertrian painting. Uh, and uh, here you can see it's, it's a plow. Yeah. It's a here you have a beef, a beef, and a plow. So it's very, just to say that it's very, very hard in France, the grain production. It's uh, something that we, we did for a long time, and which is quite very important for us. So the bread spread in the Mediterranean world and became our staple food. We, we eat bread. Uh, the second uh, aspect of our history, why bread and wheat is so important for us, is due to our revolution, the French Revolution. So um, it's not the main causes of the French Revolution, but one of the reasons is that the revolution started after several uh, catastrophic wheat harvests uh, at this moment, and uh, the people uh, wanted uh, bread. And the first time that they came to the the Versailles castle, to it was because of the bread, they wanted <coughs> bread, and uh, the revolution uh, started. And uh, in, uh, during this uh, period, uh, we had a law in uh, this period is a terror. It's uh, the period where we cut uh, <laughs> the head of <laughs> our <laughs> king and son. And uh, in this, during this period, uh, the French uh, revolution, uh, man and woman, uh, decided that the baguette, our bread, long bread, became one of our symbol, a symbol of the French uh, identity. It's a law. It's not only a cultural aspect. It's a law. The baguette is part of our ident identity. And uh, now, uh, um, the baguette is still part of our identity. Not only baguette. We have uh, several kinds of, uh, of bread. Uh, but uh, something uh, very important that uh, um, the we we eat a lot of uh, uh, bread, so it's one of the reasons why we produce a lot of wheat, uh, and uh, we eat a lot of baguettes, and uh, we buy our baguettes in craft. We can say craft bakeries, not industrial one. 
and we have a lot of low regulation for our bread. We have, for instance, a law, a specific law, uh, what is a traditional French bread that the, the bakery can uh, sell. So it's with no additive, only water, flour, and salt, and leaven. Uh, and uh, here it's a, a, a Google, you know, a, a Google uh, movies for the, the, the birthday of the law we, we have. Just to show you that it's quite very important for us. And uh, the, the bakeries, <coughs> we have uh, as many bakeries as uh, uh, cities in France, uh, everywhere. And it's, uh, it's uh, very important for the local, uh, um, how the local life. Bakery is, is, is uh, as important as a, 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 a bar in French. It's a pub in English. Uh, yeah. Pub, a pub, yeah. So it's so um, it's very brief history. But just to, to tell you that we it's very important. It, it could explain why we have a lot of wheat in our country. We have also other crops and uh, than cereals, not only wheat and oat and barley and so on. The other crops, uh, part of the other crops come from the new world, your world. Uh, potatoes, tomatoes, tobacco, vanilla, sunflower, and corn. So corn was introduced in Europe by the Spanish and the Italian uh, um, from uh, the 15th uh, centuries to the 16th around this uh, period and the so corn arrived in France only in the 17th uh, century and uh, was rapidly spread in south southwestern part of France it's uh, at the border of the Spain so it's why we have uh, a lot of corn so now we are a wheat producer a wheat civilization but also a corn one because of this so um, some some uh, some data. Uh, just the, the f five main, uh, the four main crops in the world that are produced and exchanged. So we have corn, rice. We are also producer of rice, but I will not talk about this aspect because it's a very very small region in France, so it's not so important. Wheat, barley, and other crops, uh, and. Uh, just to have an idea of what is the place of France in the world, uh, in the world. So uh, we are, um, if we compare with your country, we 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 don't produce a lot of wheat. Uh, we are, but if we compare the size of our country, we are the first producer of wheat in Europe, and the fifth fifth in the world. So it's quite a lot because we are we are a very small country and uh, we produce a lot of wheat when we compare to other one. The uh, the first four it's uh, China, U.S., India, and here it's Russia plus Ukraine and so on. So it's quite big area. So we are produce a lot of uh, cereal in France and we are the first producer in Europe uh, and uh, the fifth in the world. And just some also data to compare uh, because uh, it's something sometimes it's quite complicated to to compare country because we are totally different. It's uh, just to show you. Uh, so pay attention to this data. It's an economic study from uh, from French expert, but it's uh, it was not published. It's just uh, in a report, so we have to pay attention. But it's more the idea of. Uh, the difference between country, which could be interesting. Uh, so here you have the two French region where we produce a lot of wheat. Uh, so you you can see the, the the farm size. So it's very big farm for us, very very big one. The on average, it's uh, 50 hectares in France a farm. So it's quite very big one. And uh, with uh, 100 hectares of wheat in this uh, in this farm. And uh, we can compare this farm in terms of profit with farm this farm. They, they have the same profit. And a farm in France with only 200 hectares can have the same profit that a farm in the US with 2,100 hectares. 
Be, uh, why we have this difference? The main point it's due to uh, our yield. We are a very we have a very intensive production, so our yield are very very high. So you see that uh, you can see here it's in uh, in Picardy, this region. I will show you where is it. It's around 10 tons per hectare of wheat. It's quite a lot. Um, to obtain that, we, we had a lot of research and so on. But also, we will see we need a, a lot of inputs. Uh, to so that's not due to multiple cropping seasons per year. Off of one harvest, you're able to get that much yeah, yield. Yeah, one <laughs> harvest. Yeah, yeah. So when we, we plant the wheat in the in between October and November, and we harvest the wheat in July. So we have only one wheat. It's the same as Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, th is this data saying that, is that giving a, a really low efficiency to Russian production? Yeah, That's because uh, Russian and Ukraine are very extensive. Uh, um, actually, I'm not a specialist of Russia and yeah. Ukraine, <laughs> but I know a little bit. Um, they, they were quite good in terms of yield before the end of the communism and after the after the end of the communism they um, they lost a lot of their uh, productivity um, their big uh, change and uh, you know um, um, the normally the farm was quite very large one uh, but um, the worker had the small one for their own consumption and the small one was more productive than the large one because they were the owner of oh their yeah. farm. So the big farm uh, collapsed after the end of the communism. It's uh, a reason why the, the yield are not, not so, are quite low. I think that, I'm not sure, but I am a soil scientist at the origin. <coughs> For me, in Ukraine, you can find the most beautiful soil in the world. So you should have, you can obtain very easily uh, 10 tons. But it's more <coughs> the, um, the way to produce and so on. But normally these two countries should, uh, the production should increase. We will see because there is a war, so <laughs> it's uh, quite complicated. So just to have some data to, to, to better understand the uh, French uh, and European production and uh, and we have quite similar cost of production, so it's quite important. So, uh, France. So, uh, my country. Um, here you have the Atlantic, the ocean, ocean, ocean. Uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Africa is just here, and here you have Italy, Switzerland, Germany, and so on. Okay, uh, here. You can see part of UK. Um, uh, just to show you where we produce grain. So the main grain production in France, it's in the north part, the yellow here. And uh, in the center, all this part. Uh, uh, so we produce a lot of wheat in this region, a lot of grain. <coughs> I will show you very quickly short, uh, some pictures. We also produce grains uh, in the west part, but here we, we can find the dairy system uh, in this part, uh, in other part also. So we produce corn, but corn for forage, silage corn. It's not uh, for grain, okay? And in the south part, we also produce uh, grain. Uh, in this part, we produce corn and sunflower. And in the, all the south part, uh, we, there's more there are more orchards, wine, and so on. But we also we produce grain, and we produce uh, durum wheat for pasta. And here in the north, it's uh, soft wheat for uh, the bread. I come from, no, I come from this region, but I work uh, <laughs> here uh, in this region. Uh, in my region, we have a several uh, production. We, we are not 
we have not a good, uh, strong specialization. So we can have corn, we can have soybean, we can have wheat. It's why we have quite the same uh, research with Erin, because it looks like your uh, crop rotation. Very diversified yeah. <laughs> very yeah. similar crop rotation. Yeah, but uh, similar it's not a, 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 a big production area of, uh, of grain. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, the m yeah, I'm uh, sorry, it's just quite the same. The main cereal crop, so you will have this slide on, on the, the, the files that you, you will have on your website. So, with the different uh, corn. Uh, we have also uh, other cr uh, crops. So, we have uh, wheat in the north, corn uh, and, uh, in the south. We have also a lot of uh, oil crops in France. So all seed rape uh, and sunflower, more all seed rape than sunflower. So um, as for the wheat, the all seed rape is more in the north part and the sunflower is more in the south part, it comes from the, the Spain. And uh, it's something, <laughs> you talk about protein. Uh, we don't have a lot of protein in Europe and in France. You can see it's zero. 0.2 million of hectare of protein crops. Uh, here we have around 2 million hectare of oil crops and we have 10 million hectare of cereal crops. So we don't have protein crop in Europe and in France. Um, one of the reasons it's um, due to the policy, European policy and also the WTO um, you know WTO, 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 you know, the, um, in the 19s we wanted to, to increase our wheat production and as we at this moment import wheat from the US, the US say, oh no, we, we, we don't want that you increase <laughs> your production. No, it's, it's, a, it's a joke. <laughs> but the, the agreement say, okay, we, we, we have the uh, wheat, the cereals, and we let the protein to the South America and North America. It's a kind of agreement. Now it's quite finished, this agreement, but the reason is that we have very few protein crops, and it's a big, it's a major issue for us. We don't have enough veg uh, uh, protein which come from cro uh, the crops, and we have to import all our protein from South America. And it's something very... Uh, very uh, strange. We, there is no GMO huh. in Europe, uh, in France, it's uh, forbidden, and we import a lot of GMO from South America. So um, some things that uh, we, we, we work on that at the national scale, we would like to increase our protein crops uh, for a lot of uh, reasons. And we have also industrial one, but it's not so important. Just we have a lot of sugar beet. We have the first producer of sugar in Europe uh, because of our sugar beet. Uh, just very quickly, uh, three pictures to show you what. So here we are in the, in the north part of France. And uh, we have one crop rotation, uh, dominant crop rotation. It's uh, all seed rape, the yellow one, with barley. It's so it's why we have all the oil seed rape and wheat in the north and center. It's because we have one crop rotation. Only winter crops, not very sustainable one. Uh, you, you will see. Uh, so the crops in the west part and northwest part. Uh, so it's quite a little bit different. You see the landscape is quite different. Uh, we call that in French bocage. I tried to translate with wooded countryside something like this. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in this, uh, so here we have the corn, uh, we can have also some wheat, but less, um, less uh, um, with a lower yield, six ton. Uh, and you see, uh, we have a lot of trees, it's f more for the livestock farm. So it's a kind it's a bit different. It's not a, a, a big region for the grain production, it's more for the livestock. And the crops in the south, so the ir irrigated corn, very productive also. And uh, in the south, south part of France, it's, we have a, a lot of crops, it's a lot of diversification. It's maybe more sustainable. 
uh, with some with typical crops from the south, such as lavender. Um, here you have a, a wheat. You can have a very different kind of crops. It's less productive. It's uh, it's a uh, yeah. It's quite different. Um, just uh, as a, uh, I show you some picture of landscape. It's um, grain production is also important for us because. Um, we are a, a, a country with a lot of tourists, um, depend of the year, but sometimes we are the first country for the number of tourists in the world. And uh, grain production and the landscape due to the grain production is very important also. Um, for instance, you have two uh, quite famous paintings of Van Gogh uh, and Monet. Uh, here it's in the south, in the west part. Uh, um, just to, to tell you that it's, uh, it, the, the grain production is part of our um, culture, history, economy, and also part of the tourism. So it's also uh, something that uh, can explain why we have so many grain production, so much grain production in Europe. So for, for the farmer and the farm, so we don't have a lot of farms in France compared to you. So we have uh, 500, around 500,000 farms in France. We lost a lot of farms. Uh, when I began my study uh, 20 years ago, it, it was around uh, 3 uh, million of farms and now we have only uh, 500,000 farms. So we lost a lot of farms. Uh, for instance, in 10 years, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we lost 21% uh, 20, of farm, farmers. And at the opposite, uh, at the opposite, 26, uh, the, the farm size increase, increases uh, by 20, 26%. So Consolidation versus loss of farmland. The farms are under the operation of one farmer, multiple <coughs> farms, or is the farmland not being farmed anymore? No, it's consolidation. It's consolidation. Yeah, consolidation. We 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 lost a little bit of um, land for f forest, but it's not land of grain production. It's uh, land uh, for the normally we we should have livestock and pasture and part of this land quite complicated to cultivate and so on go to, uh, go to uh, goes to this land go, goes to the forest mm -hmm. so we have more and more forest but uh, no here it's a, a consideration um, uh, so um, our farmer are quite so it's not graduated uh, such as you <laughs> it's uh, uh, 80 80 percent of our young farmer as um, um, I, it's uh, the E level, E level, no, the baccalaureate. Uh, BS. BS. Bachelor's degree. Yeah, bachelor's degree, and uh, two years after. Uh, uh, well, we masters. We get masters. No, no two years. Two. So high school. So it's uh, so it's two years after high school. Two years after high school. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, it's I'm sorry. yeah. So uh, it, it's not so bad. It's quite uh, better than uh, before. We have uh, one third of women as a as farmer, uh, but uh, we don't have a lot of young farmer. The average age of the farmer are around sixty year old. So it's quite. Uh, I don't know in the U.S., but it's, uh, pretty similar. Yeah. It's uh, we we have problem to um, to have new farmer and to uh, it also could explain a little bit what we lost a lot of farms. Um, in terms of profits, um, as in the U.S., I think it, it depends on, on the, the market. So we we can have very good year, uh, such as in 2012. So the the profit uh, on average was uh, around uh, 60,000 uh, euros, so it's almost the same in dollars, I think. Mm -hmm. we have, uh, it's quite equivalent. It's not too bad for, for French farmer, But in 2014, 
uh, it was uh, less than twenty thousand dollars. So it's due to the high volatility of grant prices. So even if we have subsidies, I will show you. Uh, even if we have subsidies, we farmer need uh, to produce. It's not um, subsidies from Europe are not enough to to have a good uh, a good profit. They, they need to produce a to and to have good grant prices to have uh, more profit. Okay, and uh, I think that it's quite the same also. Um, often, uh, so nine percent of the farmer in France. Uh, uh, grow 35% uh, of the, the grains. So there is a kind of concentration of the, the production to few farmers. And 54% uh, of the farmers grow only 14% uh, of, the, of the land for the grain production. So it's, I think it's quite the same everywhere. So we have also a concentration of the grand production to very big farm for us. <laughs> um, um, so uh, here it's a um, slight <coughs> complicated. Um, it's just uh, if you are interested in uh, how a farmer work and uh, with who uh, and what is the, the the, the sector, uh, here it's a, a slide, I, I tried to put a lot of actors who work with farmer to show you that it, we have a, a lot of um, um, uh, institution, extension services and so on in France and a farmer work a lot of with a lot of people and can have a lot of help and also a lot of constraint. It's a, I, I call that a very structured sector. I don't know if it's a good word, but it, it's, uh, it's not just a farmer who, want, who decide what he want and wants and he works on, on, a, on a place without, uh, without connection. There is a, a network and it's very, very important. So first, we have a very strong farmer unions and one uh, with maybe 90% of the farmer, the French farmer are only in one union, it's this one. Uh, it's very important. Uh, it could be like communism, you know, one, only one union of farmer. But the aim is that this big farmer union could be, is very powerful and could discuss with the French government and with Europe. It's to be uh, stronger, okay? It's also, it could be a problem because um, these farmer unions, uh, the, how we can say that, the, the, the main, f the farmers, the most important who decide in these unions are grand farmers from the north of France. So often the, the, what the, the French farmer decide, it's not what the French decide, but what the grand producer of the north decide. It's, uh, it's a bit different. So the farmer unions and after you have a lot of um, of, uh, of uh, institutions. So here I put uh, I all the, the not public but a little bit governmental institutions. So we have a research center such as in the US. I think it's the second national research center for agriculture in the world in terms of uh, Researcher, it's uh, around 10,000 researchers. It's quite a lot for our country. We have uh, extension services uh, for uh, grant production, and we, we can have the same for livestock and so on. At regional scale and at local scale, we have also technical advice for grant production. And this, um, all these people are paid by the, the government by the taxes of the farmer, go, uh, the taxes go to the government and after they pay uh, this, uh, the, the advisors and the researcher. All this, um, this um, uh, uh, extension services work directly with the farmer and can help the farmer. A lot of the, the, the advice is free for French farmer. As it's paid by the government, the French farmer don't have to pay to have advice, okay? 
It's free. A lot of, not all. After you find, the, as you know, uh, the, the big firm, so buyer, German firm. Here it's a French one for the seeds. Uh, we have a lot of uh, machinery uh, firms. Uh, and uh, something, uh, almost all the grain farmer uh, send their uh, gra uh, sale uh, their grain to a cooperative. Correct. So uh, the cooperative uh, sell also input and after collect uh, the grain. So there is a very strong connection between farmers and cooperative. But pay attention, it's not small cooperative owned by the farmer. Uh, now our cooperatives are quite very big. Okay? Very, very big. And farmer could decide a little bit. But uh, our cooperative sometimes looks like more buyer, more Santo size than uh, a small one. Okay, it's quite a, a big sector. And part of the collect of the grain go directly on the market uh, with um, the trading. And after we have a bank for the farmer, we have insurance for the farmer, so we have all the, the sectors. So what we have to, the most important in this slide is that uh, a French farmer work with a lot of people, could have a lot of help, uh, a lot of things have, um, 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 we, we do a lot of things for the farm and the farmers. Uh, it could also explain why we produce so much uh, grain. Okay, it's very important for France, so we have a very structured sector around the farmer. So how we use the grain? Um, uh, we are a small country, but we export half of our production. Uh, um, because we, we produce uh, a lot of grain. So uh, around 45% is exported. Um, other part is uh, for animals, or store on farm, and uh, this part is also for animals, okay? So around 15% and 12% uh, goes go to the animals, uh, corn, wheat, also barley, 9% uh, for the humans and 3% for the food industry and a little bit for the, you say bioethanol, you know, the biofuel, bio biodiesel, yeah. yeah. It's not a very big sector in Europe. And uh, we have also, we are a producer of seeds. We are, I think that we are one of the first producers of corn seed in the world. And we also, we export uh, products, bread, flour, and so on, so, which come from the grain. So we export a lot of our production. Just an example for the wheat, uh, the soft wheat. Um, I'm, I'll go very quickly. Just to show you that um, the, the honey balls, so okay, maybe 10, uh, uh, 9 million of tons go to the animals. But uh, the six million tons go uh, to the human consumption. So uh, wheat, soft wheat, is not only for animals. It's uh, also for humans. And uh, it also could explain what we want very high qualitative wheat, because we need high qualitative wheat for um, milling and for bakery. So uh, yeah. Here it's a, a picture of uh, the main port in uh, in France for the the export of uh, of grains. So you can see big uh, silo storage uh, tank uh, near the, the 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 sea, the ocean, and we export um, mainly our grains to um, in Africa. Uh, before in Russia, but now we have a, a kind of embargo. So, well, what? okay, I have to spin, no? <laughs> um, so, we produce a lot of grains, we export half of our production, and, uh, and we are a small country, so how we do that? We use a lot of pesticides and nitrogen. So, we are the first consumer of pesticides in Europe, in tons, and we are the third in the world, after 
the US and India. We, 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 we are a very, very small country, but we are the third produce, uh, consumer of pesticide in tons, not ton per hectare, tons. Uh, and uh, often the French say, okay, it's for the wine, it's for the orchard. But actually, uh, around 70% of our pesticide use is for grain. Uh, and um, the, here we have some mean number of pesticide application. It's uh, in 2011. A lot of data are in, in 2011 because we, we had a, a big survey uh, in France at, at this moment. And uh, f just to, to show you very quickly, but seed rape, so we have a lot of one. It's, uh, very, it's not a good crop. Uh, regarding uh, pesticide use, so we have a lot of in insecticides because we have a lot of pests, because we have too much acid rape on the same area. We have a fungicide, herbicide. The worst uh, crops are su sugar beet and potatoes. It's uh, something horrible. The wheat, it's not so good, <laughs> but uh, um, the green corn, it's not maybe uh, actually it's not so so bad. A little bit of herbicide, but not fungicide. It's quite better. Uh, but we use a lot of pesticide. We also use a lot of nitrogen fertilizer. So around 140 kilogram per hectare in average for the four main grain crops. And uh, according to a report from researcher. Uh, the we have a um, farmer in France uh, put more nitrogen than the crop need to be sure because they need a very high yield so to be sure they put a little bit more nitrogen and uh, because of that we have a on, uh, in average we have a, a surplus of nitrogen of around th uh, 32 kilogram per hectare per year in our um, in France and it could be very very variable. Sometimes it could be 15, so it's not so important. But uh, sometimes it could be around uh, 70 kilograms per hectare, so it's quite uh, ve not very good for the environment. We will see this aspect just after. Just for comparison, our crops, corn, which is one of the more nitrogen intensive crops, I think we, our recommendation be closer to 120 kilograms per hectare if pounds per acre is pretty equivalent. Which I it is, so it's, no, it's, grains, it's yeah. No, nah, for for corn, it's not one. It's for the four main groups. For corn, it's two hundred oh. kilograms. Okay. <laughs> Are you putting on a lot of nitrogen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, no. For corn, it's okay. higher because okay. it's a mean with barley. You need less, yeah. and uh, with the wheat, so no. A lot more nitrogen than we're. Right yeah, right. yeah. We we use a lot and uh, too much. So uh, other very quickly other uh, agricultural practices. Uh, we have bare soil, we can say bare soil, without cover crop during the winter. Uh, more when we have spring crops, it's normal, but uh, often we have cover crops in the north because uh, we have only winter crops, so it's easy to have a um, um, cover crop in, during the winter. We use, uh, we, we use no-till, actually, a little bit. Uh, uh, mainly for wheat and also rape, also a little, also a little bit for um, corn. It's quite new in Europe, no till. Uh, it's uh, normally European farmer plow, so it's quite new. Uh, and so, as we use a lot of pesticides and nitrogen, we have a lot of environmental um, uh, problems and regulation. So first, uh, our first environmental problem is the water quality. So here you have the nitrate regulation at European and national levels. So it's a, a big, big re regulation with a lot of constraints. And uh, so if you are in a yellow area, you have to do a lot of things to protect the water quality uh, regarding nitrogen. You have to reduce your nitrogen uh, uh, input. You have to put cover crop. It's an obligation. You don't have the choice. Uh, you have to, uh, no, to, to do uh, other things. So you have a lot of uh, agricultural and, and environmental measures. Um, so all this yellow uh, area, uh, 
present a water quality problem. And I discovered this morning that our uh, stress hold for the nitrate is 50 milligrams per liter, and yours it's 10. So if you take your uh, stress hold, the wall fronts will be red uh, regarding your recommendation. So in, in Europe, it's 50 milligr milligrams per, per hectare. So, we, so it's a very big issue because um, uh, on all this area, we have to clean the water before to drink the water. It costs a lot of money. And uh, the cost of the, of the water increase for the consumers, the citizens, so it's a, a very big issue. And we also have um, a lot of, uh, you see, we have a lot of cost with beaches and uh, tourists everywhere. And we have a lot of uh, green algae everywhere because of the nitrate pollution. So it's quite a, a big, big problem. Um, for other problems, the pesticides. So here you have a map. Uh, we have a broadcast on the TV two weeks ago, a spectacular broadcast. And they, they did this map <laughs> with uh, where we buy uh, pesticides. So uh, here it's, um, sorry, but if you like red rind, but here it's Bordeaux. Yeah, it's due to the red rind of Bordeaux. Uh, we use a lot of pesticides in this region. But you see also the north part of France with all the grain. And we also use a lot of pesticides. We buy a lot of pesticides. And here you have the quantity of pesticides in the river and in the groundwater. So uh, you see there is a lot of red, yellow, uh, orange uh, areas and uh, in all these areas we have pesticides in the water and too much pesticides. So uh, it's also a, a big issue. We try to find this problem, we do try to, to find solutions, so uh, we have two, two actions. We citizen movement, so a lot of French are quite afraid by pesticides, so we have kind of movement to, to to try to find solution. Also, we have farmers, conventional farmers, uh, because we have more and more uh, disease due to the pesticides. Uh, for instance, this guy, this farmer, is quite famous in France. He's uh, ill, very ill. And uh, because of the uh, herbicide of Monsanto, the lasso, the name of this uh, herbicide, and he won against Monsanto. I think it's the only European farmer who won against Monsanto two times because there is a lot of, uh, <laughs> and uh, so uh, it's quite a, a good news because uh, we have the the the, the, the cancer for the farmer are increasing, and uh, so it's citizen movement and farmer movement. We have also a national regulation, a national plan to reduce pesticides. So it's the name is Ecofito. So um, it's uh, by our French ministry, and our aim is to uh, reduce by 50% our pesticide consumption by 225. For me, it's quite impossible. It's a uh, kind of uh, to reduce by 50%. It's something. Uh, it's quite a lot. Uh, but we will see. We have this plan, so we have incentive to do that. We. Farmers have money to reduce the pesticide and so on. But Sorry, who, whose plan is that? Or the French Ministry of Agriculture? Okay. The government. But at national scale, it's not European one. Yeah. Yeah. I talked with uh, one of your professors yesterday and we talked about that. So, um, so French. Um, uh, are afraid by pesticides, but they are very afraid yeah. by GMO. It's for 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 them, it's worse than pesticides. So what exactly <laughs> is going to happen to reduce pesticides? Uh, to reduce pesticides, we, we the the plan is to um, um, use more integrated pest management. You know, pest yeah, yeah, IPM. Uh, management, to change our crop rotation, so all seed rape, wheat and barley 
Okay, we, we would like to change that and to have more crops and uh, spring crops because it's a lot of winter crops. So we would like more spring crops to 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 break the pest and weed cycle. We have, there is a lot of uh, agronomical uh, solutions that we can use. First, education of the farmer. So we have a lot of uh, we have um, a group of farmer and uh, they are helped by the government with money, with uh, advisor and so on to reduce the pesticide and to be a kind of a, 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 a pilot experiment. You know, it's a we. we the name is the, the, the Eco Fito Farm. So they are a kind of pilot and they, they try a lot of things and they could be a kind of example for the other farmers. We have also um, uh, a certificate to use phyto uh, pesticides. Now, farmer and also you as a um, worker in agriculture, to use pesticide, you, have, you need this certificate. Uh, good practices, how you, you have to use a pesticide, what is a good um, amount uh, according to the crops, several recommendations. But you, you agree one solution could be GMO, but um, it's something that we don't discuss in Europe. It's, it's just forbidden. <laughs> it's, uh, so the French government will never say, okay, maybe we could try GMO, it will be kind of a strike. They don't know or they don't want to know okay. that they eat a GMO, <laughs> you know. It's, yeah, I, I know, I know, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the, the, I don't represent the French people, eh? I'm just, uh <laughs> <You're listening>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's, um, I, I don't know why, but uh, we have the nuclear, uh, we have nuclear uh, power station, we say, everywhere in France, we have a lot of, uh, a uh, very dangerous uh, thing, but GMO, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, health concern for consumer. It's health concern for um, uh, citizen movement such as ecologists uh, and so on. It's uh, the fear um, the um, dissemination of the gene in the environment. And uh, also, um, it's also a political uh, reason. A GMO, a lot of GMO come from Monsanto and firm from a non-European firm. And uh, if you buy seed in a firm, actually in France, you, you could cultivate your seed as a farmer and use your own seed. You don't have to buy it for it. It's not the main... Uh, Mainstream, a lot of farmers buy their seed, but you could if you want. And what they uh, don't want, the farmer don't want to be uh, dependent on the firm for the seeds. So there is also a political and ethical aspect. It's for the citizen movement or so on. For the consumer, the, the, the basic consumer, it's more uh, for the health. And we, we know that the, there is no, no reason, but uh, it's like this. And I think that uh, the Citizen movement, ecologists uh, also uh, uh, give this message. Okay, it's not good for us. They know that it's not the truth, but uh, it's uh, just to that. For thanks to that, the, the, the French consumer uh, agree with them. So it's a big movement. We are not uh, alone in Europe. Germany is the same. It's the same. Belgium. Uh, I think that there is GMO in Spain, a little bit. Maybe in the UK or so, but uh, it's, uh, a lot of uh, European countries. Uh, so uh, the second uh, environmental issue is the biodiversity and agroecology. Uh, so I say it's more French. So uh, we have citizen movement for agroecology, and also now we have a law, a national law, to have more agroecology. Uh, so here it's uh, citizen movement. Uh, a man, very famous in France, very good one and very interesting one is Pierre Rabhi, he's a farmer. And it's, uh, he was the first French, uh, uh, sorry, I, I wrote in favor of agroecology. I didn't know, I, didn't, I don't know how to exp 
to explain. Like it's not. Maybe? It's not the advocate. He created agroecology at farm level, mm -hmm. 20, 15 years ago, and uh, he, he he was uh, the promoter of agroecology for the farmer and citizen movement. He was a um, candidate to the the president election in 2002, for instance. Uh, this this man. He didn't uh, have a lot of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it, no, it's it's very it's a very interesting man. So there is a citizen movement, but there is also the, uh, a national plan to do agroecology. Uh, so it's our French minister of agriculture. Uh, okay, it's okay for French. <coughs> How many times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should probably move into a discussion. Okay, so is there is also the, the CAP? Um, sure, but we talk about Just this, this slide? Yep, this yeah. sounds good. Sounds good. So, um, so all our organic, uh, uh, sorry, uh, grain sector is um, framed by the CEP. Uh, so it's a common agricultural policy. So uh, we have national regulation, but we have a lot of European one. And, uh, so um, just to show you the evolution of the CEP and why we have more and more green measure in Europe. So when we start, we were only six uh, at the beginning, six countries. Now we are uh, 28 countries, uh, the evolution. So when we start, it was after the Second World War, war and uh, we need to produce food because we didn't have enough food to, uh, because of the war. So the U.S. G gave us money with the Marshall Plan, and we we started to produce food, a lot of food, and the policy was created to help the farmer to produce food. So it's why we have a very intensive production in France, and why we have a very high yield, why we export our food. It's because of this period where we farmer have to produce a lot of food. So uh, it's because of the U.S. <laughs> no, <Not me. laughs> no, maybe. No, it's because of the government uh, uh, wishes. They want self-sufficiency for the population. They want a strong Europe. They want food. <laughs> we need food. We were. I, I, I was not born here, huh? but uh, <laughs> my parents, yes, and they, they need food. They need to eat because uh, they, my parents. Uh, uh, um, um, were born during the war and they were very uh <laughs> yeah so yeah and there's this moment French and European want wanted food so we produce a lot uh, it was also a political uh, reason we want we wanted to be a, uh, to to be a, um, it's not a good thing to depend on another country for your food. So we want, want it to be self-sufficient. So we produce a lot of food. So the, the main thing is that we produce a lot. It was a success, a very, very good success. We have a lot of food. We store a lot of food. We have uh, food and food. And we have also a lot of environmental problems. So in the 90s, the, uh, the policy changed a little bit. And we introduced different kind of payment. So the payment, the subsidies were not to help to the farmer to produce, but was to help the farmer <coughs> to to live, and if possible, produce, but with m more environmental, uh, in a more environmentally way. Okay, so it was a little bit changed. So it was very at the beginning. It was quite shy, well, very shy. We we. We started with green uh, measure. Uh, we also started with a quality label. So we have a lot of quality label because we wanted also a very high qualitative food. So in the 90s and in the 1000s, the, the green measures in, incre uh, increased a lot. And now we have a new uh, common agricultural policies. Uh, this uh, new one uh, started in 2014, and now maybe uh, if we take all the money of the the common agricultural policy, maybe half of the money depends on environmental issue. So the the common agricultural policy is uh, 
either take in, takes into account uh, the environment and uh, this um, this green uh, uh, aspect is increasing year after year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have any comments or questions or any? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I had a question to Lana Bokaj. Uh, as uh, I was wondering what the purpose is. Is it for habitats or filtering or um, to define property boundaries? The bocage, uh, the wooded, the wood. Uh, um, at the, the origin, it was to um, to to delimit to the boundaries of plot of the plots, and as it was a livestock areas, it was also uh, for the co, you know, to have shadow. It was also with natural um, a natural perspective. It was uh, okay. You have uh, trees, and also in, at this moment, they use the trees. Uh, to for the heat, for the, the wood, and so it was quite um, also for diversification. But it's very very hard the bocage, uh, the bocage, <laughs> bocage, the bocage. It's very very hard, and um, because of the green revolution, we have less and less bocage. Uh, we have um, during the, the 70s and the 80s because of the increase of the side farm, we we cut the edge rows and we, uh, we, we have uh, bigger field and plot. So it's something in danger uh, and also a lot of environmental measures now we, uh, are to preserve and to, uh, to plant again trees to have a new bocage. Yeah. So is that something that's being encouraged now? And is there sort of been studies into the benefits of using a system like that? Yeah, so the, um, there is a lot of research on um, the effect of the wood and the wood lines on uh, the carbon, on the, uh, the uh, um, natural enemies of pests, um, uh, the water and the wind, because one of the reasons was also the wind, because thanks to the wood lines, you cut the wind so it's quite better for the crops and for the uh, livestock, for the animals. So we have a lot, yeah, we have a lot of research and uh, uh, measure to uh, to have more wood uh, in in the in this area and also in the open field area, because um, at the origin the open field area was only forest, and the the monk, M1, the monks. Uh, in in the middle age, cut all the <laughs> the trees to do uh, to, to cultivate the. So uh, we are we also we would like to have more trees in this area. So yeah, it's uh, it's measure in the in the CEP measure at uh, national scale uh, to have more wood uh, and uh, also agroforestry. You know that we have also a lot of measure to have more agroforestry. Sorry? The farmer Pierre, the president, or the one who is... The Pierre Rabhi? Pierre, ah, Pierre Rabhi, sorry. Um, you said he implemented agroecology and is in his own farm? Yeah. What kind of system was that like? So, um, you know, we are a little bit socialist in France, so it's an eco-community. So, um, actually, it's a village. Uh, with uh, several uh, farmers or um, workers for, um, I don't know the word, for the wood, you know. When you work with the wood, you are... Uh, Craftsman or...? Uh, yeah, not to, to build house. Uh, Carpenter? Carpenter and so on. So it's a kind of eco-village you have this one. So it's a community. And uh, so uh, some people grow crops, some people educate the church. The, the kids, some people build the, the house. There is no possession. Uh, you, you, you pay for your house, but for 10 years or 15 years, and after you, you quit. It's uh, okay to. And uh, what, uh, in terms of agricultural system, it's um, very extensive production. 
with a, very, a lot of uh, with crops and animals, both to have the you know we have a lot of specialization, grain production against livestock, and it's totally separate. He tried to uh, integrate uh, the animals, the crops. We have a term I don't know. Uh, I don't know the English word. It's uh, the term. It's permaculture. Yeah, yeah permaculture. Yeah. Kind of permaculture. Kind of. A little bit. You know. Are there many eco villages in France? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you many. But we have uh, um, um, a lot of in the south east part because of I don't know why. Maybe history. Because also it's a, it's a poor uh, region, so it's uh, easier to find land to do your eco village in, in a poor region than in a very rich one. Uh, so, uh, but I don't know how many eco village villages we have. We have more and more, but uh, I can I can tell you. Is that where the agroforestry happens, or is that uh, agroforestry? No, happens everywhere. So uh, agroforestry, we have different kinds of agroforestry. We have agroforestry traditional one. So it's um, orchard. So it's in the west part in the bocage. So you have orchards for the apple, and you have a uh, pasture with. Uh, uh, animal w which grazed the pasture, so it's agroforestry. And we have new one, it's, um, it's a line of trees. So the trees are uh, either for the fruit or for the wood, depends on what you want. And in between the tree lines, the tree rows, you can have wheat, corn, uh, or vegetables. We have a lot, of several kinds of agroforestry. And we have um, agroforestry everywhere in France, but it's not a uh, ten percent of the land. Huh? It's uh, maybe two or three percent, but everywhere. Yeah. It's a very also a very beautiful <coughs> landscape. It's also uh, why they want to do that to have a, uh, to improve the landscape. The hormone? Um, what's that? The hormones? The growth hormone. Growth hormones. DST. DST. Um, I think that the, the hormones was forbidden in the 90s in, the, in France, something like this. Okay. Um, I don't remember why. I think, it was, I think it was due to us, consumer health, something like this, public. Uh, and uh, how we control that? It's your question? Uh, we have, um, um, we have, uh, you know the translation of control des tiers? Uh, have you ever heard the, have the you ever heard management? Control control have you ever heard management? Yeah, so um, if you are a dairy farmer, you you have the right and you it's free, you can have this dairy uh, herd management, herd management services. services to control the quality of your milk. So you control a lot of things. Uh, I'm not an expert, but <laughs> um, the protein content and so on. And I think that through this, this uh, dairy herd management, you can also a little bit control these uh, toxins and hormones and, and so on. It's forbidden to uh, no one sell these hormones, but you can buy it on the internet. But uh, it, there is no. And also, normally, we have. Um, Veteran, veterinaire, it's not uh, uh, pest, veterinary, veterinary uh, services, uh, and they also they can control. Okay, in each region and each uh, department, it's a local at local scale. There is control uh, with this veterinary, veterinary, yes. veterinary, <laughs> yeah, veterinary uh, yeah, services. So we can control. We don't want hormone such as GMO. We no hormones in the, in the chicken, no hormones in the pork, no hormones in the beef, no hormones. 
And I don't know if that's a question or addressing that. My sense, and I, I don't have any data information for this, but I, I don't think that there are many tiers that people see. Yeah, that's what that I was just yeah, yeah. like, yeah, no, 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 because because I'm um, uh, also the. Um, the, the the producer sells the milk to a big firm, and uh, they, um, with a, they don't want problem <laughs> uh, with this. It could be a scandal, scandal. It could be so. This firm also pay attention to the the milk and how the milk is produced. So uh, I think it, it could be quite complicated to. to well, there's only one more minute, but I do want to because the other aspect of the class is climate change. You mentioned the pesticide regulation and. and input regulation, is there any policy coming down with respect to agriculture's impact on climate change or vice versa? So, um, the, 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 there is not uh, regulation, the, the law. Um, um, there is um, a, a recommendation, a communication. So, uh, as I, I told to uh, one of the students this afternoon, we have a new uh, plan, a new yeah, communication plan. Um, due to the, um, you know, we in in December in France we we had a big event on the climate. The in French it's the COP 21. It's a COP COP 21. COP 21. Yeah. So during this event, French Ministry of Agriculture and the French Minister that uh, I uh, um, I presented. Um, decided to have a new plan, so the, the name of his plan is uh, four per thousand. So it's a little bit technique. So four per thousand, it's if you increase in your soil the carbon content of four per thousand each year by hectare, you will uh, balance the greenhouse gas emission of France. Okay, it's a, a calculation. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, all if you uh, so, what the government wants, it's that farmer uh, use uh, agricultural practices which uh, increase the carbon uh, um, content in the soil. Uh, so, but it's not a regulation. It's not a law. It's just um, a, a positive communication. There is no, it's not monetary. It's a, uh, it's a, there is a, a list of, uh, of recommendation. And uh, our researchers uh, uh, made a lot of study on, on this problem. And now we have kind of um, a range of, if you use trees, single trees, you can have, uh, I don't know, uh, um, one per thousand more carbon. If you use, Three lines. You can have so you have a list with how how much carbon you can store, and you it's to to promote these practices. Okay, so it's the first plan, and after we have other plan. It's at the regional scale. It's a climate plan, claim plan. So it's also to to help educate farmer to pay attention to energy fuel consumption. It's not the carbon, it's more the, the fuel consumption. Yeah. But we don't have a lot of things about climatic change for agriculture. A lot of things, it's for industry, transport, but not a lot for agriculture. And see, yes, uh, part of the payment for this, the subsidies for the farmer, the French farmer, depend on the the environment, 30% of the payment. And one of the measures is that you have, you have to keep your permanent pasture. Sorry, I, I forgot that. <laughs> you have to keep, uh, if you, so it's also for the climate, yeah. climate change. So they, what they want in Europe is to uh, preserve um, the permanent pasture land. And uh, one of the measures in the common agricultural policy is to, to uh, if you destroy a pasture, you have to create a new one. Oh. If you don't do that, you will lose money. You will have less subsidies, 30% less. Just to show you, uh, maybe, that it's quite very important for French subsidies. 
uh, air, uh, a French farmer can uh, be paid by Europe without doing nothing. 400 euros per hectare per year. So the, the European subsidy. So it's so if you 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 take 30 percent of that, could be quite a problem for the farmer. We are over time, so we should probably let the students go. But thank you again. Okay. So much.